Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I'm Jamie B. I read a lot of books and today I am walking you through my 24 books of 2024. Uh, my version. Um, so if you haven't been following my channel, you will have missed a crucial detail that will make sense of this game. I moved this year actually about a month ago, something like that. Um, and it was one of those weird moves where I wasn't going very far. So I didn't line up somebody to drive my stuff. I, I had a few things I needed help with, but for the most part, I carried all my stuff up the alley to the new place which means my entire book collection, and I do have a large book collection, and I'm totally unapologetic about it. I love my book collection. However, carrying the whole thing up the alley started me thinking, are all of these books actually worth carrying, even just up the alley? Um, so in 2024, I'm going to be reading 12 of the 24 books that I have picked um, and I'm going to show them all to you now. Um, the way this game works is um, one of the groups I'm in on Goodreads does this game where you have 24 books that you've lined up and numbered. Um, that when they choose a number by randomizer, whichever number comes up, that's the book you read for that month. So I'm going to use the same number that they pick for that game for these books as well. So whatever number gets picked for January, that's the one of these books that I will be reading for January. And I've already numbered them all. The way I um, show them off in this video will not be in numerical order um, because I've had to restart this video several times. And each time I was in a different configuration of stacks of books because I'd already gone through half of them and, and yeah. So um, the numbered list will be in the um, description below this video. Uh, and that'll be the numbering that I will be using for which book gets picked for which month. So without any further ado, here are the books that I will be reading 12 of in 2024. These are tomes. These are my idea of heavy tomes. Uh, not just long books, they are major reading projects. We have The Collected Stories of Wallace Stegner. We have five novels by Thomas Hardy, in which we have Far From the Madding Crowd, the Return of the Native, which I have read actually a couple weeks ago, last week, um, maybe a couple weeks ago. Um, so I don't have to read that one again if I don't want to. The Mayor of Castor Bridge, Tess of the Durbervilles, which will also be a reread, but it's been a while, so I might reread it, and Jude the Obscure. So by the end of this book, I will have completed those five novels. Whether I reread the ones that are rereads or not, they will be done. Sources of Chinese Tradition. This one was from a class. Um, it's been a while. I do like this subject matter. I don't know if I need to keep the book. I will read it and find out. <laughs> the Competitive Advantage of Nations. Um, I do like the theory question of what benefit or what trade-offs there are to having nations versus like having a world government, that kind of thing. Um, a while back in grad school, someone suggested that I read this. I think it came up in a discussion, but anyway, I have it. It came on a free shelf when I was in grad school. Next up, The Moral Life. This is an anthology of philosophy and fiction. I think it, yeah, it's um, ethics and literature. 
Fiction 100, second edition. This one is edited by James H. Pickering. It's an anthology of short stories. I get a lot of anthologies off free shelves or for a quarter and yard sales, that kind of thing. And then I just don't read them. So it's time to read them and decide if I want to carry them the next time I move. Um, this one's a textbook I picked up off a of free shelf. Uh, Theories of Personality, 4th edition, by Jess Feist and Gregory J. Feist. Um, I did a degree in psychology. Um, it's been a while, and I do like to read up on more recent versions of what I learned in school. Uh, so this one should be fun, but it is a textbook, so it's not that fat, but there's a lot to it. <laughs> this one was also for grad school. Uh, sex Discrimination in the Law, History, Practice, and Theory. Um, this is the sort of book that you would buy if you were going to be a law student. And <laughs> um, I am going to read it, maybe not word for word, cover to cover, um, although I've done parts of it during grad school. Um, but one way or another I have to evaluate whether this is something that I need or whether I can get rid of it. And the only way to really know that is to read it and see if I find any reason why I still need to keep this book. Um, I have not given up entirely on eventually <clears throat> you know, writing original theory or doing something in academia with political theory. So if there's enough in here that justifies my keeping it, I probably will because these are expensive books if I wanted to get it again. But if I don't need it, it was heavy. <laughs> so uh, we'll see on that one. There we, go. Uh, we have Henry James, Novels, 1886 to 1890. This one includes The Princess Cosimosima, the Reverberator, and The Tragic Muse. <laughs> Bill Clinton, My Life. I started this one. It has a bookmark. I got through about 100 pages, give or take a few. It is so tedious. So it might be a day enough. I'm giving it one more shot. If I don't finish it in 2024, it's going away. So we'll see on this one how it turns out. Black Holes and Time Warps. Not one I generally think of as a tome, but it's been a long time since I was a physics student. That was my first major. And I got through a couple years of it and then switched to psychology. So um, it's not terribly difficult but there may be some things that I need to refresh what I should know about. Um, also, it will probably result in reading more physics or astrophysics in particular. So, yeah, we'll see. If its number gets picked, there will probably be a lot more science reading in 2024. Uh, it's up to the numbers what we get to read. All right. We have the collected Jack London. Ooh. Um, this is 36 stories, four complete novels, and a memoir. We have the Oxford Handbook of Political Theory. Um, again, I got this for, for grad school. I bought this one. Um, and I think I have used one or two papers in this book as reference materials for papers. But in academia, you kind of want more recent papers and books as your references for what you're writing. If you're actually planning to publish, especially, um, it better be really good and really established if you're using older materials as your references for what you're saying. Um, knowing that, 
Uh, I mean, theory is a bit different because it is a lot more based on older philosophies and building up new philosophies out of what people have said in the past and then, you know, logic and stuff. Um, but there still may or may not be any reason to keep this. The only way to know is to read it. All right. This book you guys have seen before. I am, well, I've actually taken the bookmark out. I'm moving London by Edward Rutherford uh, to this game. So if its number gets picked, I will start it over from the beginning because I vaguely remember what happened in the first 10 pages. And after that, it's kind of just, I don't know, it didn't stick. And I usually like British history. So it's not a subject matter I dislike. The book is big, but I like big books. I'm just not in the mood for it. So if its number gets picked, we'll try it again in 2024. All right, we have Decades of Science Fiction. <clears throat> this one is edited by Applewhite. Um, Maynard. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is one that has one of those weird fonts on top of an image. And oh my goodness, Minyard. Applewhite Minyard. Right. Uh, so another anthology. I have A History of the Modern Middle East by William L. Cleveland. Classics of Modern Fiction, um, 10 short novels, edited by Irving Howe, uh, with Fyodor Dostoevsky, Leo Tolstoy, Henry James, E.M. Forster, Joseph Conrad, Thomas Mann, Franz Kafka, Flannery O'Connor, Saul Bellow, and Alexander Sultanitsyn. So uh, some of these might be rereads. I will probably still read all of them, but the ones that are rereads I might read a little bit faster. Because um, a lot of them, if they're rereads, I read them for school or something else where I wasn't really reading them for pleasure before. So we'll see. Uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I only own this first volume. So if its number gets picked, I have to decide if this is what got picked or if I need to track down the rest of it. I know there's a website where the whole thing is on the website as an ebook, um, or at least there was last time I looked. So if that's still up, I might finish the rest of it as an ebook on that website. And I think there's even discussion things on that website. Um, so could be quite an experience. Only if its number is picked, but it could be good. Modern Classics of Science Fiction, edited by Gardner Dozio. Or that the yeah. Dozwa? Dozwa. If I was a, an American trying to pronounce French. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm just not even going to try. Yeah. Modern classics of science fiction. We'll just leave it at that. And one of these days, I'll hear somebody else referring to this guy, and then I'll know how to say his name. Maybe, unless they got it wrong. We'll see. Uh, Erwin Shaw, Short Stories, Five Decades. Short Fiction, Classic and Contemporary, 4th Edition, by, edited by Charles Boner and Dean Doherty. Readings in Russian Foreign Policy. Yes, this is a book that one picks up as a free book off of shelves in academic hallways. Yeah, should be good. Well, okay, it might be good. Um, the Brothers of Gwyneth Quartet by Edith Pargeter. 
And last but totally not least, the three volume complete Capital by Karl Marx. I've actually read the first volume. That's the biggest one, this guy. And that was about 10 years ago, and I haven't read the rest of it at all. So I will reread the first volume and then read the second two volumes. So that is my 24 tomes for 2024. Um, <clears throat> theoretically, I'm going to read 12 of them. And I'm certainly going to start all the 12 tomes that are selected next year. I will not know which ones are going to be selected until their numbers come up. And the number will be whatever is chosen for the TBR takedown game in the Reading 1001 group on Goodreads. So that is one of my reading projects for 2024. Uh, I don't recommend that everybody go out and get these books. Um, some of them are going to be really a challenge to finish. Um, but some of them will be good, and some of them are worth reading if you are not a specialist in the field. Some of them um, are part of a lifestyle that maybe I've moved on from. And I think that's part of what some of this is, is <clears throat> my lifestyle now is quite a bit different from what it was 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And some of these books I got when I was in a very different space. That sounds so modern. Yeah, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Katerina, by the way, that you can hear in the background. Yeah. She has got her toy right over here. And she wants us all to know that she brought her toy right over there. And so, yeah. She brought her toy. Did you bring your toy? Wanna come up? Yeah, do you wanna come up? Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is Katarina. She says hi. She has a one eyed cat or one and a half eyed cat. Her other eye registers light and dark but doesn't really see stuff very well. But yeah. She brought her toy. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I have a feeling I'm supposed to make your toy move. I will <clears throat> sign off for now. Um, I will do another video probably tomorrow night with the books I've finished since my last update. Since I have actually finished three already since that last update. And I'm close to finishing a couple more. So I'm getting closer to my end of the year goal. Um, which on Goodreads right now, my goal is 275 and I'm at 256 or 7. So it's not totally impossible for me. But wow, I'm going to be doing a lot of reading over the next couple weeks. <laughs> so uh, happy reading, everybody. I will talk to you again soon. Bye, guys.